This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the ASUS ePad Transformer. This is a 10 inch Android tablet available from ASUS and right now it's the most affordable of the big name Honeycomb tablets. It's $399 for the 16 gig and it's $499 for the 32 gig model. It's a nice looking product. You can see here we've got a reasonably large size bezel which gives you some room to handle the product. This kind of metal surround over here that looks good. And it's quite thin. Only the iPad 2 is thinner. Other than that, this guy is one of the slimmest and it's also very light at 1.5 pounds on the market. This is a proprietary dock connector here. It attaches to the optional keyboard docking station that also has a USB port and an 8 hour battery inside of it. And here we've got a micro SD card slot that yes, there is a driver for it. It is working. Speaker grill right here. There's one on the other side. Very teeny. And I assure you the sound out of this is also very teeny. Got a mini HDMI port here. Here's your headphone jack. Nothing up top to see. Here's your volume controls. This is the power button. There's the other speaker slot. So from the side and the front it looks pretty classy and from the back, well, it's fairly plasticky. Which is okay, you know, it's durable enough. But it doesn't have that kind of frou-frou, shishi look that the Motorola Zoom say has with this soft touch black finish. In fact, the design is very similar to the ePad Slate, which is a Windows 12.1 inch tablet that we reviewed, and we'll compare those here. We'll compare it here to its Windows Cousins, a 12.1 inch e Slate EP121, and you can see the design is very similar. Size-wise, obviously there's going to be a difference, 10.1 inch versus the 12.1 inch for the, the Windows based tablet, but you can see the overall look with the black bezel and the, well, it almost looks like a speaker grill even though it's not here finished in metal and on the back of course we have the aforementioned plasticky back and on this it's a nice quality piece of hardware but it's also of course similar finish plastic back on it now what makes this so special besides the fact that it's the least expensive honeycomb tablet it has an IPS display so far we haven't seen that the Motorola Zoom, the Acer Iconia, they have standard LCD displays and this guy has a really sharp and beautiful IPS display with wide viewing angles that they claim are 178 degrees and I'd say that seems reasonably fair. So based on screen alone I would say this is actually my favorite Android tablet. Of course there are other considerations performance, storage capacity, features and all that kind of thing. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail. First let's compare it to the other IPS tablet on the market, that's the iPad 2. It is longer, it goes for a pretty strong rectangular look just like the LG G Slate does and to a certain extent the Acer Iconia Tab A500. In terms of screen quality, well it's pretty much neck and neck with the two IPS displays. In terms of weight, the iPad 2 is a little bit thinner at 1.34 pounds versus 1.5, so we're talking a couple of ounces. And in terms of thickness, just a little bit thinner, but this is pretty impressively thin, especially for a budget tablet. And now we're comparing the ASUS Transformer to the Motorola Zoom here on the bottom, and you can see it is longer, obviously. It's uh, not quite as trim. Of course, making things smaller does come at a price. It's a more expensive engineering prospect, so it's one of the reasons probably the ASUS is cheaper. And you can see the display is a bit sharper. The Motorola is not really that bad, and there's plenty of colors and all that kind of thing, but it doesn't have that razor sharpness. It's wide a viewing angle, certainly. And in terms of thickness, the zoom is a lot thicker. And it's also a couple of ounces heavier. So what features does this have? This has 16 gigs of storage, as I mentioned, for the 399 version. You get 32 gigs of internal storage for 499. It has that micro SD card slot. Works just fine. We've tested it. They've written a custom driver because Honeycomb 3.01, which it ships with, still does not support micro SD cards, despite the presence of the hardware in some models. You've got Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR on this. There is no wide area wireless. That means there's no 3G or 4G service with this. Of course, you can use Wi-Fi mobile hotspots and tethering with it if you like. And as I mentioned, it runs Android 3.01 Honeycomb, and I'm sure someday I'll see that 3.1 update that came out for the Motorola Zoom recently. This has a front 1.2 megapixel webcam and there have been three firmware updates for this already and one of the things that they addressed was camera quality and some strange video slowdown issues and we're seeing a great deal of improvement with that. Of course you can use this with Google Talk for video chat and on the back we have a 5 megapixel camera with no flash right there. Takes okay pictures, uses the stock 
honeycomb camera application. This is pretty much a vanilla honeycomb installation. That's what we've seen so far with tablets. There's not much customization. I think Google really doesn't want to see customization. That means you've got your five home screens here. Plenty of widgets. To get home in any time, no matter what you're doing, you press the home here. This is your back key and this is the multitasking launcher where you can switch between applications that are currently running. Use the down hour to dismiss that or to dismiss the on-screen keyboard when it's up. And of course all your apps are available over here. Now this ships with a couple of custom widgets that we'll show you in a minute and it has ASUS's own My Cloud application which we'll discuss in detail and then we've got My Library. We'll take a look at that right now. My li library is a document reader right here. It supports uh, PDFs, EPUBs, text files, you name it. We'll go back to the bookshelf viewer right here. You can buy books, but it's not supported in this country with the ASUS app Vibe account. You can see that we've sideloaded some books here, including EPUBs that do not have DRM on them. And we've got some PDFs over here. And it's a, it's a pretty nice e-reader, really. We'll take a look at a book. And it even has text-to-speech. Could be a little bit faster to open the book. And it reparses the book every time you open it. And you can see it working on it over here. It's not that you can't turn the pages, because you can. But it's actually recounting the page numbers and it's getting ready to do that text-to-speech engine. You can also have this in full single-page portrait mode as well. And if you tap here, you see a bookmark feature. This is to go back to your library. Actually, it's not table of contents for the book, unfortunately. And text-to-speech, which will be available once that little spinning ball stops spinning. And you can increase the font size or reduce the font size. You cannot change the fonts themselves. You cannot change the margins. This is not a super fancy reader. What there is looks attractive, but there isn't a lot more to it. And once it's done indexing the file, which it seems to do with some frequency every time you launch the book, you can actually jump through here using that tool and go to very whatever page number you want. You've got a search box over here and text-to-speech is now active and we'll play that. It's going to use the Google Voice that you know from Google Maps for text-to-speech. Or I don't think we shall be going for any walks. Whatever he has to say, he can say where everyone can hear it. Mark up some new idea he wants to try out. So that's text-to-speech. So I have to say, I like this better than Acer's ebook reading application, and especially because it supports sideloading of books, and the features are reasonably good. They're not going to beat the Nook or Kindle apps on, on Android, but it's not bad. And the sideloading feature, like we said, that, that, that is pretty sweet. In terms of other custom software, we, these are just standard Google widgets over here for your web browser shortcuts. I've got a calendar widget right there. I like this one. This is this is from ASUS, and they have this two different views that are available right here. This is my zine, and this is really just going to rotate through all the images that are loaded on the device from your camera and anything else that you've side loaded, which is pleasant. And you've got a quick shortcut here to whatever music file you've been playing most recently. A quick shortcut to whatever web page you visited most recently. You've got the weather over here. Any emails are up. Shows you calendar events that are upcoming and how many books you have in the book library that we just looked at. And that's pretty sweet. That's nice. Speaker volume, as you heard from the text-to-speech engine ebook reader, is not real loud. And we'll do some uh, multimedia now so you can see that. And we're going to test this out by playing a full 1080p trailer. Which is something that gave the Acer Iconia a fit, but this one can handle it just fine, just like the Motorola Zoom can happily. And with the beautiful display, it really is pleasant to watch video on this. You'll hear the screen, the dis you'll hear the volume though is not terribly loud. And we're pretty close to max volume. The frame rates are good here. The only time we see slow motion is when the scene is actually shot in slow mo. That's a good job. Just 
So definitely great for movie watching. You probably do want to use some headphones though, given the lack of quality and volume from the built-in small speakers. Next we're going to take a, a look at a custom feature that is really pretty cool. ASUS calls it the MyCloud service, and you know from ASUS EPC netbooks they've always had cloud storage, which is available here, and then you can have your ASUS Vibe account, but the My Desktop one it lets you remote control a desktop, and this is a splash top product. So to use this feature you have to go to ASUS's website and download ASUS PC Suite and put it on your Windows computer, it does not support Mac at this point, and then you can remote control as long as they're both on the same network, i.e. same Wi-Fi network. So you run it, and we've already set up a relationship, so it should find it just fine. And there it is. We're going to control our Lenovo ThinkPad X1 right here. And you can see on the screen I have the client running, and it's ready to be connected to. So we're going to control this using the E. And it's making the connection. And you get a little hint screen about how to control it. Of course this is best if you have the optional keyboard dock which has a built-in mouse trackpad as well but those things are impossible to come by and we haven't gotten one yet. So now we're connected and this is actually the screen of the Lenovo that I'm seeing. When it's running on Lenovo it will change it looks like to a 1024 by 768 resolution which is kind of odd and give you a virtual panable desktop. There's my entire Windows desktop here. And I'll show you what it looks like on the Lenovo. You can see it's changed the uh, the aspect ratio there, but other than that, it's business as usual. I can still use my Lenovo if I wish to directly, but we're going to use it from the ASUS. So we'll minimize that control program, and here's my Windows Start menu. And if I want to go to All Programs, say I want to go to Windows Live Movie Maker and make a movie. opening up a project that I did before and you can see I can actually play through cut and edit video so that's an interesting prospect there it makes your ASUS a lot more powerful and how about games what happens if we try to play Left 4 Dead now again I don't have the keyboard and mouse here so I'm not sure how it's going to work but we're going to try launching it just to see alright now we're playing Left 4 Dead 2 using the ePad Transformer, and we had to set it to run in windowed mode. It's a Steam game, so you have to go into your settings inside of the game and set windowed mode because when you're doing a direct streaming of display, it has to be run in windowed mode for it to work for this. Now, obviously, you're going to really want to probably use a keyboard and mouse for this quick demo. Alright, so here we are in the game. Of course, without the keyboard and mouse, it's a little hard to control. So you're definitely going to want to use some external controls for this. So, challenging prospect right there, but it does work. And of course for things like using Photoshop and a web browser, web development tools, corporate database access, very practical. And the interesting thing about this, of course, it is just an application that's running by Splashtop. So if you hit the home button, it's going to show up right here as my cloud again. And you can go back in, and there's the Splashtop remote session actually right there. So you can switch between doing other things, go back in, and you do have to reconnect when you do that. But it's a pretty interesting concept, and it's amazing that this device handles it quite well. It doesn't slow down, and it's, it's really a nice productivity feature. Good going, Asus. Okay, now back to slightly more mundane things, and we're going to take a look at the web browser. This supports Flash. We have Flash 10.3 loaded, so we can see how that performs. And obviously we have a lot of heavy applications running in the background, too. So we're going to test that out by going to the YouTube desktop site, rather than using the YouTube player, which actually does a fine job in and of itself, too, without using real Flash. And we're going to choose the desktop version of the site. And here we are. 
Okay, so now we're watching the X-Men HD movie trailer. First we're going to watch it embedded here in 360 view. I'm play in a little bit so you can see how well it does. And next we're going to switch to full screen mode where it automatically switches up to 480p. Not a problem. And now we'll switch to 720p and see how it does. Of course, that's also depending on how well YouTube is streaming on any given day. But the Motorola Zoom does 720p fine. It can't really do 1080, so we'll see how this guy goes. Yeah, we've got some frame dropping, but not bad. So that's Flash 10.3 playing in the web browser on the ASUS ePad Transformer. The ASUS has a 24.4 watt power battery. They don't specify milliamps of size. It's sealed inside and they say it's good for up to 9.5 hours of use. So far we haven't had it that many days to say definitively, but it does run about the same amount of time as my Motorola Zoom, which is say just a little bit less than the iPad too. So there's no gotcha here. It's not like it's only going to run you for two hours. This is pretty good battery life. So as Android tablets go, it's really hard to beat this one for the price. For 400 bucks for 16 gigs or 500 bucks for 32 gigs, you get a very capable tablet with an IPS display. It's relatively lightweight, fairly thin. It does have a working micro SD card slot. USB host, you're going to have to get the external keyboard uh, dock that also has a battery built in and a USB port, which is pretty neat. It stands it up and you get a keyboard and you can also fold it down and carry this guy around kind of like a notebook. So it's a very versatile accessory once it becomes available. In fact, the transformer itself is still hard to get. ASUS is having trouble ramping up production on these, but they do hope to eventually produce something like 300,000 a month instead of the 10,000 a month they're at right now. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. This is the ASUS ePad Transformer Android Honeycomb Tablet, the most affordable one on the market right now. Visit Mobile Tech Review to read the full review.